Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make another prop from one of my favorite Marvel movies. It's Valkyrie's sword, Dragonfang, as seen in Thor Ragnarok. So yeah, make it another Ragnarok prop. I found the original production artwork online, which I scaled to the size that I wanted. Uh, 28, 29 inches, yeah, okay. I started measuring the parts of the blade. So I'm looking at 43 from the tip. And instead of tracing the pattern, I measure and lay up the parts directly on the foam. So if I make it 27, that's out to here. 27 is 54, so it's out to here. Remember, you gotta draw two of these, and you gotta make them both the same, or else, uh, what are we doing so good? I have two copies of just the front portion, which is the largest portion, on pieces of black four millimeter what the foam. But before I cut them out, I wanna cut a groove down the center. The bit I'm using is a Dremel number 125 high speed cutter. I make sure the tip will only cut about three millimeters deep, because I don't wanna cut all the way through the four millimeter foam. That's better, I really don't want it to go through. I set the tip of the bit on my cut line and bring my cause tool ruler up to the router base. And then I do that again on the other end, double checking each side, of course. And then I can cut out the tight wedge for the center of the blade. Now press on the ruler as I go so the foam doesn't move around underneath. Once both halves have a cut, most of the fuzz is removed from the groove. And then I can cut the edges of the blade. And I think it's easier to do that center line first because there's more foam to hold on to while using the Dremel. I open the center line enough that I can get contact cement in there. And when it dries, I stick the sides together, getting the peak in the center of the blade. Now this is the shape that I was going for, but the edges are too thick. What the foam is a tougher type of EVA foam. It feels like it has a high rubber content or it's very rubberized. So sanding down the edges works just fine. Now you can sand any EVA like this. I just know that this foam will hold this edge much better and it won't warp nearly as easily. This guy is looking perfect. I've got a really thin edge down the side, which is great, because if I glue the two of them together, I don't think I could have decorated it at all. I, I, this should be perfect. This one might have sanded the tip a little too much. Now, that, that, that sounds funny. It's true I might have sanded a little too much, but at the same time, it might still be okay. Once I actually glue the two pieces together, it may still end up behaving. And of course, uh, with the heat of the friction, the foam stretched a little, and they may not have been cut perfect. But uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna be okay. Well, I can always make another piece. I'm gonna make another piece. I clean up some of the bulges that make the edges too thick and start to coat the seams with contact cement. But I was still concerned about the curled tip. I've given the glue some time to dry, right? It needs to, so it sticks better. It's the way contact cement works. And I was thinking about how wispy and thin I've got the edge, which is okay, that's kind of what I wanted, right? But this has got me worried that maybe it's too thin and I don't want this to end up curled and, and looking like Aladdin's shoe instead of the point of a sword. So while the glue was drawing, I took a small bit of aluminum uh, welding rod, brazing rod, is that the right term for it? But it's an aluminum rod and I actually hammered it flat and then in addition to that, I came back with some tin snips and gave it a little more of a point. Not because I'm trying to make a pokey end to the sword, which technically this is. It's because I wanted it to be able to fit as far out as I could towards the tip to make sure that the, the end remains flat. I want this to make sure the end of the sword stays straight. And then uh, it goes up a little bit here. That's kind of okay. I'm thinking about putting a golf club over it anyway. I probably should snip that to be safe. I set the blade on edge because the table holds the bottom side open while I close the top side that I can see. And I'm careful not to pinch or pull on the edges because this is not a wavy edged blade. That's actually, for as, a, as thin and pointy of a small bit of foam as that is, that's actually really straight. That's very cool, okay. For the rest of the blade, I'll need to cut the pattern. To get the lines for this part of the blade, I crease the center line of the pattern and then lay it over the top of my foam, which gets me where I want to cut for the filler part that's at the base of the blade. This open V shape has panel lines on the finished blade. 
and I cut a new separate panel for it because I want the peak to be less than the rest of the blade. First thing to do is Dremel router those center lines and then I can cut the shapes. I bevel the edges of the inset panels, just the upper corner, because once everything is glued together, this will make them more obvious as panel lines. And I glue the top peak on both of the panels. To glue them into the blade, I set some paper on one glue seam. That way I can get the one side in just where I want it first, then remove the paper and get the other side done. Before I make a piece to fill that hole in the side, I need to make sure I have enough room for the core that I'll use to keep the blade stiff. And the core I'm going to use is a golf club. And not the whole thing, of course, I don't need the club part, just the graphite shaft. And I have concern over the end of it being too blunt or wide. So I sharpen the end on a belt sander. Now I'm certain that it'll not only fit inside the blade, but it won't cause a bulge down at the tip of the sword. It also easily fit over the wire inside of the tip. And I can fill all that space with some epoxy later. I was wondering if I could get the final sides cutting them from other chunks of foam. Joe even gave some ideas on how to get the pieces cut out, because all three sides on this part need to be curved in some weird way. Everything I was trying just didn't get the results that I was looking for. So I went with my first idea after all that, which is to glue on a 15 millimeter triangular dowel of HD foam and then sand the sides to fit the blade. Trying other ways was just making it more difficult for myself. It's kind of typical. There was one last raised panel on the blade and I cut a set from some two millimeter foam with an angled edge. I used some masking tape to keep unwanted glue from the surface and I can stick the two panels on. I wiped down the entire blade with VMNP naphtha. This will remove any dry glue residue and clean off the surface. Just wear a respirator if you use this stuff because it's pretty nasty. I'll give it some time to dry off and then the blade can be plastic dipped. So I've already started to put the plastic dip on the blade and I'm real happy with how this is looking. So what I want to work on next is start the grip. To do that, it's actually not going to be that hard. It is 21 layers of six millimeter foam. So I'm going to cut out 21 squares, glue them together, run them across the belt sander and make the grip. The largest they seem to be is about 28, maybe almost 30. And then they get down smaller to just under 20. Okay. The width of this ruler is good enough. So I cut a strip and then I square the strip off, getting as many made as I can. Then I need to cut up more scraps until I have over 21 squares, slightly larger than my biggest measurement. All right, I got one that's wonky and I have one extra. Okay, that's step one. Step two, put a hole in each one. I take a piece of scrap foam from the Gundam foot and glue two walls to it. And I cut a cover that leaves one corner open. Now trace where the square is going to fit, finding the center, and drill a hole in the cover. Then glue the cover over this setup, and I have a way to quickly drill holes as close to the center as I can on each of the 21 pieces that I cut. And these were all done by hand, so there's still some variance, but that's expected. Stack everything up, and it's a near perfect fit for the grip. A piece of half inch aluminum tubing will line all the holes up. And I thought that I would need to mark the orientation of the parts, but this actually wasn't needed. I lay all the pieces out, gluing pairs together, always sticking them together over the tube, keeping the centers aligned and flat on the table, which is the best I could do for the edges. I pair the two stacks into four stacks and then again into three pieces that's what I wanted. And then I have all 21 layers glued together with the center hole aligned. That's solid. All right. The grip tapers from just over 30 millimeters to just under 20 millimeters. So I marked the small end as a target for reducing the size. Then I let it rest for a couple of hours so the glue can really set. Now just sand down the sides of the stack, keeping an eye on the big side and the target marks on the small end. And once I've got the taper correct, I sand the four corners into a bevel, and that's the basic grip shape. The grip looks like it's separate pieces of ivory in the movie, and I think it's supposed to be carved from a dragon's tooth. So a heat gun will open the seams back up and I can get those individual lines back. This is why I cut so many small pieces when I started, to get this texture. So now what I want is the cross guard. This is the most artsy piece of the whole thing. The cross guard is a stylized dragon skull, which also looks like it was carved from dragon's tooth. 
I cut three layers of six millimeter wet the foam from a basic cross guard blank. And then I used some grinding bits on the Dremel to carve out the details of the dragon skull. Now this takes a little while to do, you know, about an hour. And the skull I made has more going on than the skull from the movie, but I'm happy with it. Sweet. So I got a found object that I'm gonna use for the pommel, so I'm, I'm secure with that. I just need to get the rest of the parts to fit together and I can paint everything. I looked at the dragon skull again and I thought it was just a little too skinny. So I cut it open in the center, but not on the edges that were carved. And then I stuffed wedges of six millimeter foam back into it. This made the center thicker and made the cross guard just a little bit bigger than the blade and it looked much better. Joe had applied two coats of Plastidip Glossifier to the blade. It's super shiny and smooth and still flexible. Then he set up his airbrush and filled it with all clad two chrome paint. And he applied a couple of thin coats right over the glossy black finish. Near perfect looking chrome and it's still flexible. Then he mixed up some transparent light blue with a poly coat gloss finisher and sprayed it over the chrome. We wanted a candy coat finish of blue, and this turned out pretty good. The blade will take a while to fully dry and be safe to touch, so I'm going to paint the grip. After a few coats of white plastic dip, I mixed a dark ivory color for my base coat and then covered the entire hilt. The cross guard is glued on now, and the half inch tube of aluminum makes it easy to handle. I let the hilt dry and mix a batch of nearly white ivory paint, and this paint I dry brush on the corners and over the ridges on the skull. Then I seal it with some Ultra Mod Podge Gloss. I use some really shiny silver ink paint to add rings at the top and on the end by the pommel. After that dries, I water down a light brown paint and rub it into the cracks I had opened up with a heat gun. And that finishes the painting for the hilt. This has been sitting all night, so I know the outside is, is set, it's dry, it's ready to go. So what I want to do is start gluing stuff together. I mix up some two-part epoxy and carefully spread it on the golf club and load some of the blade. And these are finally glued together. It didn't happen before they were painted and that could have been a big mistake, but it's all good now. I spread more on the golf club and inside the hilt. I really watch for drips and I'm careful not to overflow the epoxy glue when I'm putting them together. The epoxy is set and I'm almost finished with the sword. One piece left to do and that's the pommel. I was concerned about how I was going to make that. I can't do it out of foam, it'll be too flimsy. And then I realized this is almost identical to a common shape that's easy to get a hold of. The top to a wine bottle opener. This is one of those where you, you screw it into the cork and then you pull the handles and it pulls the cork out of the wine bottle. This little part up here is almost perfect. So I'm going to use that. You ever have like one found object that just kind of makes the whole project fun to do? Yeah, that's it. Taking a wine bottle opener and putting it onto Valkyrie's sword when she's a heavy drinker in the movie, perfect. The big plus also with this particular opener is uh, the body's plastic, so I'm gonna be able to cut that with a Dremel. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna need to... Uh... I drilled out the golf club because it tapers ever so slightly on the inside, if you remember. And then I sand the sides of the corkscrew. I just need to remove a little bit because it was only about a millimeter over. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, that's a good fit. That's what we want. He gives it a little bit of a counterbalance. All right, just gotta make sure I put that in straight when I epoxy it. Oh, I'll be upset myself if it's not straight. All righty, let's glue that in. I mix up more two-part epoxy and really load up the grooves on the corkscrew. I had also taped over the painted parts. I would really hate to ruin the paint now. And when this epoxy is set, the sword is finished. Most of the materials I use are available for order and have shipped right to you. 
I put a part list and links in the description. Now because the corkscrew is metal, I actually get a really good counterbalance for the blade, which is really pretty cool. And there's one other thing that it does. Because you know, there's gonna be lots of different ways you can make a sword for a kick-ass character like Valkyrie. But this is how Odin makes. Nice thing is, this is five minute epoxy, so it should be ready to go fairly quickly. You know, about an hour. There's one other thing that I really like about having a metal corkscrew in the pommel. It provides really good counterbalance for the blade. You know, when I set it on my finger right. I want to thank Jonkolo, McThor, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.